Okay, so self-inquiry. I relate self-inquiry to the, to the Course in Miracles. So, the Course in Miracles says that we're going to something which is formless. The experiencing of something which is formless and timeless. So how do you actually get that as a spiritual experience rather than being it um, something that's mentally thought about or an intellectual construct? So, here's the thing. Everything in this world that can change and pass, there has to be something here which is always present, which cannot change and pass. That's the basic substrate. There is something timeless and changeless beyond form and it can be experienced right now, in this very moment. So the only reason it's not experienced is that there is identification or there's hooking in or there's meaning given to something within the realm of form. That's why this eternal stillness is obscured right now. Now, it could be that everyone who's watching me is an internal stillness and silence beyond all types of form, fear, thoughts, images or they could be experience of something and that something then seems to be the real experience and the, the eternal stillness is obscured. So how do we let that go? And what is the process of self-inquiry? Well the process of self-inquiry is simply this now, if everyone's uh, listening to me right now, if you're in, um, this is the way to do it, but uh, I'll sort of paraphrase. If you're right now just in silent bliss, or si I shouldn't say that, silent stillness, if there's just silence and stillness, eternal, limitless, and that's the experience right now, then nothing needs to be done. However, you self inquiry then is the process, if there is something that, you're that is being experienced, which is not that, then the process of self inquiry is done on the type of form that is being experienced in this moment. So you don't need to do self inquiry if you're in infinite silence and bliss, or stillness. But if you're experiencing right now, it's like you would do self inquiry if that's not the state. So then, of course, the next thing to be aware of is what is the experience now? Because that gives the first reading of what type of form is being identified, what type of object or thought or sensation or image is being hooked into, which is creating, seemingly creating this in the now as an experience. So then self-inquiry can now be done because it's because the truth then, if you're identifying with the, let's say there's identification with the body, then actually the experience right now will be body. That will seem to be the real experience. So self-inquiry can then be done on body, experience of body, because that's a form. When, when, some, when form is identified with, it seems to be real, it seems to be the location of you. Now your location is limited and is constricted to formless. So the body is like a shape, it can have a feeling in it. But then, that is, that then is, that's then experiencing self inside, trapped inside a body. Trapped or trapped within feelings within a body. So then, what is self-inquiry? Well, self-inquiry, how do you unhook from this form to get back to the formless, the eternal stillness? Well. First of all, you take that as a reading. Now, it could be that the body, then you, you, and then it's like something, like some, there are some times when the body is experienced and there's sometimes when there's no awareness of body. So, it's, and sometimes there's a heavy feeling of the body, sometimes there's a light experience of the body, and sometimes there's no experience of the body. It seems to be just light and thin, and nothing there. So actually, something is here which is observing this either the, the constriction of the body or no constriction of the body which is not the body. So here's, here's, a, here's a metaphor which I hope everybody can get. Like if there was huge interest and identification with this cup it would seem to be like almost like the cup is you. It would just take out all of your experiencing 
all that identification and interest in the cup. But if we said, like, is there a detached observing of the cup, which is not interested in the cup, which is watching the cup, then suddenly space and distance will occur between the detached observer and the cup, because that interest or hooking or the meaning is, is, is being released. And so now there seems to be a space or, or a stillness starting to be opened up, and it seems like the cup is starting to disappear or go off into the distance. Well, this would also happen with the body. Now, another common one that people are identified with is thinking and thoughts. Well, everybody's experienced lots of thoughts passing by, and sometimes there's been experiencing of a few thoughts passing by, and then there's been experiences of no thoughts and sublime stillness and presence in the moment. So all these things are things, but thoughts are passing, and whatever notices thoughts being passing, but the many or few, cannot be a thought. It has to be that which is observing thoughts. And is there, not only is there an observer of thoughts passing by that can be experienced now, is there a detached observing, which is not interested in any thought which passes by? So as you, it's not asking a mental question, but it's an experiential de-hooking to experience something which is before thoughts, before the body, which is eternal. So you just do, do the exercise, whether it be the body, a feeling, a location, whether it be thoughts or images or memories, there is that which is watching that. Be the watcher, be the observer, and then be the detached observer, and then watch these things start to go off in distance and disappear. So that's the, uh, that is the process of self-inquiry.